In this video, I will show you how to analyze someone using the Big Five personality traits. I will be using an article from the IDR Labs website as my primary resource. I will be analyzing the protagonist from Diablo Cody's masterpiece, Young Adult. Her name is Mavis Gary. I will also be illustrating some of the aspects of each trait with clips from other Diablo Cody movies. The method I will use is essentially the same as the method utilized by the Neo PIR or the IPIP, and so is a fairly standard method for calculating Big Five scores. Extroversion is composed of the facets positive emotions, excitement seeking, activity level, assertiveness, gregariousness, and warmth. Positive emotions refer to an individual's propensity to experience positive emotional states such as laughter, joy and excitement. High scorers are joyous, enthusiastic and optimistic. Low scorers are not necessarily unhappy, but they typically experience fewer episodes of emotional elation throughout their lives. Hence, they are not characterized by the same unbridled joy that is typical of those with high scores. Mavis doesn't appear to express any sincerely positive emotion throughout the film. Most of the time we see her smiling or laughing, it appears to be done for show in order to ingratiate herself with someone, especially when flirting. The only time I see a genuine smile from her is in this moment. God, you are a piece of work. You're a piece of shit. We also have this line where she asks... What about neutral? I mean, like, what if you don't feel anything? I'll give her one out of five for positive emotion. Excitement seeking refers to an individual's yearning for stimulation and intense thrills. High scorers crave excitement and have a disposition for seeking out intense and varied sources of stimulation. Low scorers have less of a need for thrill seeking and may thrive in roles that would bore those with higher scores. Mavis doesn't appear to exhibit any thrill-seeking behaviour, and the snapshots we get of her regular life in the first few minutes of the film suggest a person who doesn't do much beyond a perfunctory adherence to self-care, socialising and avoiding her working-from-home career duties. I'll give her a 1 out of 5 for excitement-seeking. Activity level refers to an individual's inclination to stay active at all times. High scorers are busy and entrepreneurial, and will typically be engaged in several different projects at once. People with lower scores are not necessarily less productive, but prefer to take things at a slower pace, where they are better able to concentrate on each task. Although Mavis tells her mother, It's like I can hardly keep up. She actually seems to spend a lot of her time doing a whole lot of nothing. We even have a scene where she appears to be sat staring into space as she prepares for her date with Buddy. I give Mavis 1 out of 5 for activity level. Assertiveness refers to an individual's tendency to speak up, affirm themselves, and attempt to set the agendas of the people around them. High scorers have an easy time taking charge and speaking their minds. They tend to come across as natural leaders, but may also be seen as forceful and overbearing. Those with lower scores are typically content to stand back and let others take centre stage. It's not easy to evaluate Mavis on this facet, as she generally doesn't appear in group settings, but there are a few times where she exerts her will over others. She gets Matt to show her where Buddy lives. She talks Buddy into drinking a lot more than he wants to and she makes Matt break out his special reserve liquor even though he doesn't want to. I'll give Mavis a 4 out of 5 for assertiveness. Gregariousness refers to an individual's desire to be surrounded by many different people all at once. High scorers enjoy social gatherings and get a kick out of interacting with others. Those with lower scores are inclined to feel overwhelmed by grand get-togethers and will often shy away from big social engagements. On the one hand, we don't generally see Mavis going out of her way to be surrounded by large groups. On the other hand, when we do see her in crowded rooms, she certainly doesn't look like she's overwhelmed by the crowd. I'll give her 3 out of 5 for gregariousness. Warmth refers to an individual's propensity to display positive reactions towards others and the ease with which they form friendships and bonds. 
High scorers find it easy to make friends and connect with people they do not know well, whereas people with lower scores find it difficult to initiate contact with strangers. This does not mean, however, that low scorers are hostile so much as they are reticent and subdued when meeting new people. Mavis seems kind of insular and uninterested in making friends with anyone besides Buddy. On the other hand, she doesn't have any difficulty behaving towards others in a superficially friendly manner when she wants to. When Matt starts talking to her, she is reluctant to encourage his friendliness, but later on she starts calling him and showing up at his house, and is clearly in the process of actively making him a close friend, whether she is conscious of this or not. I'll give Mavis 3 out of 5 for warmth. That concludes the six facets of extroversion. Let's summarise the scores we have so far. Positive emotion 1, excitement seeking 1, Activity level 1, assertiveness 4, gregariousness 3, warmth 3. That works out as 2.2 out of 5, or 29%. That's a fairly low score, placing Mavis more in the range of a typical introvert. We now proceed to agreeableness. Agreeableness is composed of the facets trust, earnestness, altruism, cooperation compliance, modesty and sympathy compassion. Trust refers to an individual's inclination to perceive others as fundamentally fair and honest. High scorers will typically assume that others are well-intentioned and trustworthy, while low scorers find it natural to think of others as scheming and dishonest. Low scorers can thus be said to be more sceptical and suspicious, while high scorers are more good-hearted and charitable. Throughout the film, Matt tries to convince Mavis that her plan to seduce this happily married man is a terrible mistake. She ignores him every time, and eventually gets quite defensive. When Buddy tells Mavis that his wife forced him to invite Mavis to the naming party because she's worried about her mental well-being, Mavis says, You're lying. For trust, I'll give her two out of five. Earnestness denotes an individual's basic stance towards deceiving others and scheming for personal gain. High scorers are reluctant to connive or manipulate, and can thus be thought of as frank and sincere. Low scorers tend to believe that some degree of manipulation is necessary in life, and are thus likely to come across as calculating and shrewd. However, low scorers are not necessarily amoral so much as they are guarded and restrained when it comes to divulging the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Mavis is honest to Matt about her plan to steal Buddy from his wife, but to every other character in the film she tells them that her books are selling well even though they're about to be cancelled. She says she's back in town to buy some real estate, She pretends to remember Matt, and she conceals her fundamental intent, which is to destroy a marriage. She even lies about having a dog in her bag. Mavis definitely deserves a 1 out of 5 for earnestness. Altruism refers to an individual's level of unselfish concern for others, as well as their immediate willingness to help them. High scorers experience caring for others as rewarding and find it natural to offer favours with no strings attached. Low scorers see requests for help as invasive and are more likely to let their support hinge upon whether they also stand to gain from it themselves. When her date tells her about working as a volunteer teacher, her reaction is to say, Oh my god, yikes. The most altruistic thing Mavis does in the film is offer Sandra some coffee from a pot which Sandra has made. When she goes to buy a present for Beth and Buddy's baby, she passes rows of cute baby gifts and picks a set of plain burp cloths, kind of a passive-aggressive gift choice. I'll give her a 1 out of 5 for altruism. Cooperation compliance refers to an individual's tendency to avoid confrontation and the ease with which they yield to others. High scorers seek compromise or set aside their own needs with the aim of avoiding conflict. Low scorers are more confrontational and can be thought of as more willing to use pressure or intimidation to get what they want. I don't think there are any explicit moments of Mavis using pressure or intimidation to get people to do what she wants. Equally, there aren't really any instances of her compromising with others. In the broader sense, though, her scheme to steal Buddy from his wife is an example of her placing her own needs over the needs of all the people who will be harmed by her behaviour. 
Her plan, if successful, would create a lot of conflict. There's also a put down which strikes me as being subtly confrontational. It's so inspiring to see a single mother with so much confidence on stage. I'll give her a two out of five for compliance. Modesty denotes an individual's inclination to present themselves in a humble and unassuming manner. High scorers are uncomfortable, professing that they are superior to others and may come across as self-effacing. Low scorers find it easy to profess their superiority and may sometimes be perceived as arrogant and authoritative. We see Mavis's snobbery when Matt asks her if she's moving back to Mercury and she says, Of course not. Gross. No. I live in Minneapolis. She brags about how successful her books are to several people. Towards the end of the film, we see her trying to be more humble, but also wanting to believe the ego inflation that Sandra is supplying. I'll be generous and give Mavis a two out of five for modesty. Sympathy, compassion refers to an individual's inclination to feel sympathy and compassion in their dealings with others. High scorers are empathetic and refrain from judging others harshly. Those with lower scores have a more detached stance and typically think of themselves as more logical and discerning than most. Low scorers can thus be perceived as cynical, while high scorers may come across as too kind-hearted for their own good. I want to say that Mavis is an unsympathetic person, but it's not easy to pinpoint any moments where she judges people harshly. Nor does she convey the impression that she sees herself as highly logical or discerning. On the other hand, I'd say she demonstrates a lack of compassion in the way she mistreats her dog, always shoving it into bags and leaving it locked alone in motel rooms. There's also the scene where she asks a disabled man, Could you walk any slower? I'll give her two out of five for sympathy. So for agreeableness, she gets these scores. Trust, two. Earnestness, one. Altruism, one. Compliance, two. Modesty, two. Sympathy, two. This works out as 1.7 out of five, or 17% for her agreeableness. That is a very low score. Next up, conscientiousness. Conscientiousness is composed of the facets self-assurance, orderliness, dutifulness, achievement striving, self-discipline and prudence. Self-assurance refers to an individual's sense of competence in pursuing their goals. High scorers naturally trust in their skills and competence, as well as their ability to maintain the focus and self-control needed to complete their tasks. Conversely, those with lower scores are liable to experience a lack of agency and often doubt their own ability to finish the tasks and goals that are set before them satisfactorily. I suspect Mavis's self-assurance is fairly high. Her plan to steal her ex-boyfriend away from his wife and child is one that many would balk at. She seems pretty confident that she's hot and intelligent and can get what she wants. I don't ever see her doubting her own abilities, there's no indication that she knows how terribly written her books are. I give her 4 out of 5 for self-assurance. Orderliness denotes a person's tendency to strive for order and control in their lives. High scorers are well organised and naturally inclined to apply system and structure to their pursuits. Low scorers are more inclined to improvise their way through life and prefer to switch back and forth between different tasks and endeavours in accordance with what makes the most sense to them at any given moment. I don't see much orderliness or organisation in Mavis. Her apartment and her motel room generally seem to be in a bad way. She seems to wake up with a massive hangover every morning, so I'm guessing that she doesn't approach her daily activities in a strictly regimented fashion. She seems to squeeze in a bit of writing here and there on a park bench or in a fast food restaurant. Her beauty and makeover regimes, however, seem like they might be quite systematised. I'll give her a 2 out of 5 for orderliness. Dutifulness refers to an individual's propensity to regard tasks and obligations as binding. High scorers are committed to fulfilling their promises and duties, even when it is inopportune for them to do so. Low scorers are liable to find rules and regulations confining, and thus to view the obligations that are set before them as suggestive rather than mandatory. We see Mavis violating certain social norms like running out on the guy who is still asleep in her bed or trying to seduce a married man. She seems to be avoiding messages from her agent, even hanging up on him. 
She feels no obligation to let her parents know that she's back in her hometown. I give her one out of five for dutifulness. Achievement striving refers to a person's level of ambition and willingness to make sacrifices in the pursuit of success. High scorers are goal-oriented and purposeful, but those with extremely high scores may also be perceived as overly focused on work and compulsive in their need to succeed. Low scorers are more laid back with regard to their goals, and more inclined to approach their workloads in a way that allows them to get by without overexerting themselves. Mavis certainly doesn't present as a workaholic. We have no reason to view her as ambitious about her work. We could perhaps argue that Mavis's real work is her plan to seduce her old boyfriend. She certainly pursues this goal in a dogged and focused manner. I'll be generous and give her three out of five for achievement striving. Self-discipline denotes an individual's willingness to tolerate difficulties and boredom in the name of completing their tasks. High scorers are driven and persistent, while those with lower scores can be seen as less tenacious and more inclined to procrastinate. It should be noted that a low score on self-discipline does not necessarily denote an inability to complete a task so much as it attests to a lack of desire to do so. Again, there is a feeling that Mavis will write a sentence or two, then get bored and frustrated. Mavis doesn't really face any setbacks in her pursuit of Buddy until the end of the film. She convinces herself that her plan is working and Buddy is falling for her. She also chooses to ignore the damage to her car and instead starts driving her old car, which her parents have apparently kept hanging around. I can't think of a compelling reason to give Mavis anything higher than one out of five for self-discipline. Prudence refers to an individual's tendency to act only on the basis of thorough prior considerations. High scorers are cautious and deliberate, and thus inclined to mull over every option and implication in their heads before moving to act. Low scorers are more spontaneous and less inclined to worry about making wrong decisions off the cuff. Mavis appears to wake up, take one look at the guy in bed beside her, throw all her clothes into a suitcase, then drive across country on the spur of the moment. When Buddy rejects her, her first instinct is to get as drunk as possible and create a huge scene. She goes to see Matt, starts crying, then sleeps with him. She wakes up aware that she needs to change, but is quickly talked out of her resolution. I see no evidence of prudence or deliberation in Mavis's conduct and give her one out of five for this facet. Here are her scores again for conscientiousness. Self-assurance 4, orderliness 2, dutifulness 1, achievement striving 3, self-discipline 1, prudence 1. This works out as 2 out of 5 or 25%, quite low. Next up is openness. Openness is composed of the facets fantasy, aesthetic interest, emotional orientation, experimentation, intellectualism, and diversity tolerance. Fantasy refers to an individual's propensity to perceive their surroundings through a lens of vivid mental associations. High scorers are imaginative and easily bored by the mundane world. They thus tend to abstract away from it through daydreams and elaborate mental imagery, whereas those with lower scores are more inclined to focus on the facts and things that actually exist around them. Mavis's whole adventure of trying to win back Buddy seems to me to be shrouded in fantasy and romanticism. She keeps convincing herself that he is sending her signals that he is frustrated with his marriage and wants to run away with Mavis. When we see the interactions between Mavis and Buddy, the conversations are extremely awkward and dull. There is a complete lack of chemistry between them, and yet she has convinced herself that they are destined to be together. This becomes most obvious in the scene where she tells her mother... I mean, you make all these mistakes along the way, but the world will make sure you end up with the person you're meant to be with. And then she daydreams about the sort of children she and Buddy would make. Throughout the film, Mavis demonstrates this tendency to fantasize and to use these fantasies to escape from her depressing and mundane life. I'll give her five out of five for fantasy. Aesthetic interest refers to an individual's inclination to appreciate the experience of beauty in their lives. High scorers are easily engrossed in experiences they find beautiful and will thus devote more time and effort to seeking them out. Those with lower scores are less immediately affected by the aesthetic and will thus spend less of their time and resources in the pursuit of it. 
Mavis doesn't demonstrate much interest in aesthetic beauty, but she does have some interest in designer clothing, and she has chosen literature as her career. I'll just give her a non-committal 3 out of 5 for aesthetic interest. Emotional orientation denotes an individual's degree of preoccupation with the emotional lives of themselves and others. High scorers regard feeling as a central part of human existence and thus dedicate much of their time to emotions. Those with lower scores are less immersed in the emotional domain and thus liable to regard feelings as inconvenient or irrational occurrences that should not be allowed to dominate. As with the fantasy facet, Mavis's quest to steal Buddy suggests a preoccupation with feelings. Her feelings of unrequited love, his feelings of frustration and loneliness. Unfortunately, her preoccupations do not seem to correspond to reality. We have no indication that she has given Buddy much thought in the intervening years. She describes herself to her friend as the ex-girlfriend of the father who doesn't talk to him anymore. Equally, Buddy appears to be very happily married. Mavis's worldview is driven by feelings, and yet her ability to read her feelings and the feelings of others appears to be extremely compromised. The evidence is ambiguous, so I'll give her 3 out of 5 for emotional orientation. Experimentation refers to an individual's eagerness to try new things. High scorers have a yearning for novelty and are easily bored by routine. Low scorers are more comfortable in familiar environments and tend to be sceptical of novelties and fads that are not immediately useful. Mavis gets out an old mixtape and listens to the same song over and over. When she eats, she seems to favour the same old fast food chain restaurants rather than seeking out independent restaurants. She shows no interest in Matt's custom beverages besides using them to get wasted. However, unlike the other characters in the film, she left Mercury and moved to Minneapolis, so she chose to leave that familiar environment. She appears to live a routine kind of life, but she also appears to be bored and frustrated. I'll give her a 3 out of 5 for experimentation. Intellectualism refers to an individual's degree of interest in abstract ideas. High scorers are fond of toying with ideas and are often particularly thrilled when they come across new and unconventional strands of thought which they have not encountered before. Low scorers are indifferent to high-flying theoretical pursuits and tend to be more interested in facts and things than in theories or ideas. Mavis doesn't demonstrate any intellectualism during the course of the film, nor does anything that we know about her life suggest that she ever had any intellectual interests. When Matt tells her about the history of their school, she dully replies, you know everything. I don't see any reason to give her more than a 1 out of 5 for intellectualism. Diversity tolerance refers to an individual's inclination to accommodate the unconventional lifestyles and beliefs of others, as well as to deviate from traditional norms and values themselves. High scorers are accepting of differing values and ways of living, even when such practices and beliefs are opposed to their own. Those with lower scores have greater respect for tradition and typically see greater merit in the stability and sense of belonging that a shared set of values can create. Mavis thinks living in Mercury is gross. She calls it The heck lake town that smells of fish shit! She dismissively summarises small town dwellers with the line They don't even seem to care what happens to them. We see her pretentiously asking if the young couple's living room decor is supposed to be shabby chic. While none of this is a critique of unconventional lifestyles, it's clear that they are violations of her idea of how people ought to live. She doesn't seem to understand why anyone would want to live in that way. She also used to call Matt a theatre fag in high school, which is perhaps indicative of some history of intolerance. I'll give her a 2 out of 5 for diversity tolerance. Let's total up those scores. Fantasy, 5. Aesthetic interest, 3. Emotional orientation, 3. Experimentation, 3. Intellectualism, 1. Diversity tolerance, 2. Mavis scores 2.8 out of 5, or 46%. She's pretty average for openness. The final trait we need to analyse is neuroticism. Neuroticism is composed of the facets anxiety, irritability, immoderation, self-consciousness, depressivity and vulnerability. 
Anxiety refers to the ease with which an individual can be made to feel unsafe and start to worry. High scorers are quick to regard novel and unfamiliar situations as dangerous and hence to react with fear. Low scorers approach potentially threatening situations in a calm and relaxed manner and are not inclined to agonise over the potential problems an unexpected turn of events might imply. There aren't many situations in this movie where a normal person would have any reason to feel anxious. Mavis goes to bars on her own or she goes to a party where she doesn't know most of the people there so she probably doesn't have any social anxiety. I'll give her 1 out of 5 for anxiety. Irritability refers to an individual's tendency to become angry and hostile when met with adversity. High scorers are prone to feel slighted and react with resentment when confronted with bad news, whereas those with lower scores are less prone to anger and tend to be less severe in their outlook on life. This one is pretty easy to diagnose. Mavis has a huge public meltdown after Buddy rejects her. She yells, You fucking bitch! at Beth. She berates Beth for not returning her aggression with more aggression. She caps it all off with the line, You hate me now? Because it should be easy because I fucking hate you. I'll give her a 5 out of 5 for irritability. Immoderation denotes the ease with which an individual yields to temptations and urges. High scorers feel they must struggle to control their urges and resist short-term pleasures like candy, alcohol and cigarettes. Those with lower scores tend to find it easier to cope with delayed gratification and are thus less prone to give in to temptation. This one seems pretty clear-cut. Mavis eats ice cream, snacks and junk food. She binges through a giant Kentaco Hut meal after an argument with Matt. She abuses enormous quantities of alcohol, especially after unpleasant events like being rejected by Buddy. She pulls her hair out compulsively. I give Mavis 5 out of 5 for immoderation. Self-consciousness refers to an individual's propensity to experience embarrassment and shame. High scorers are easily embarrassed and can quickly be made to feel uneasy or awkward around others. Low scorers are less prone to feeling uncomfortable or to let inhibition get the better of them and are thus generally less affected by rejection and ridicule. Mavis doesn't superficially seem like a highly self-conscious person, and she certainly doesn't seem inhibited during her public meltdown. She seems quite distressed about it afterwards, though. But then she takes her clothes off in front of Matt. She seems quite awkward and self-conscious as she waits in the sports bar, perhaps feeling that she's overdressed. She types gibberish into her Blackberry to appear less awkward. When she first meets Matt, she casually asks him, How's your dick? I get mixed messages here, but I'm inclined to say that her self-consciousness isn't especially high. I'll give her 2 out of 5. Depressivity denotes an individual's inclination to experience low moods, despondency and despair. High scorers can easily be beset by hopelessness and feel that they lack the energy and drive to manage their daily activities, whereas people with lower scores are disinclined to experience sadness or low moods. It should be noted that depressivity does not measure an individual's propensity towards joy and enthusiasm, since these fall under extroversion, but rather measures the absence or presence of sadness in a person's emotional life. In this shot, Mavis is curled up on the couch in the middle of the day. When Matt comments on her heavy drinking, she replies, I have depression. When Mavis says, But he's not happy, okay? Matt retorts, You're hardly the authority on happiness, Sylvia. Buddy tells her, It's obvious you're having some mental sickness, some depression, you're very lonely and confused. I'll give her five out of five for depression. Vulnerability refers to an individual's inclination to be overwhelmed by uncertainty and to feel powerless under pressure. High scorers are easily stressed and may benefit greatly from peer support and predictable working conditions. Low scorers are characterised by resilience and find it easy to keep cool and stay focused in the face of difficult or demanding situations. Mavis doesn't seem too stressed about the fact that her revenue stream is being concluded. She also comes across as a pretty independent person who likes peer support but is used to standing on her own. I'll give her 2 out of 5 for vulnerability. To summarise neuroticism, anxiety 1, irritability 5, immoderation 5, self-consciousness 2, 
Depressivity 5, Vulnerability 2. This works out as 3.3 out of 5, or 58%. Pretty average overall. So let's recap everything we've deduced so far about her big five traits. Here are her traits in order of extremity. Her most extreme trait was very low agreeableness, for which she scored 17%. She scored low in all six facets, but her duplicitous nature is probably her most conspicuous component for this trait. Her second most extreme score was for conscientiousness, where she scored 25%, which is pretty low. Her most conspicuous indicator was her lack of cautiousness. Next was her extroversion, where she got 29%, a surprisingly low score considering she superficially appears to be the popular, fashionable prom queen type. The most conspicuous indicator was her complete lack of genuine positive emotion. Her score for neuroticism was pretty moderate at 58%. She got totally unambiguous high scores for irritability, depression and immoderation, but more ambiguous and somewhat low scores for other facets. Her most moderate trait was openness, with 46%. She had a wide mix of scores here, with a very high score for fantasy, a low score for intellectualism, and ambiguous scores for the other facets. So as a quick summary, we would describe Mavis like this. Very low agreeableness, low conscientiousness and extroversion, moderate openness and neuroticism. And that is how you calculate someone's Big Five scores. Thank you for watching.